Hello everyone. So I get a lot of questions regarding my clay making because usually I do tutorials which are just a quick run through with no real sort of explanation. So I've decided to take some clips from my previous tutorials and put them together and do a voiceover for you today so I can explain in more depth on the process of making clay dolls. The brand of clay that I use is Necron, soft and traditional and also colour. And I also use their pigments to colour them. These are the pigments I have. Peel, which means a skin. And this one here is caramel. And a mix of these two make a really good skin colour. So I add mostly the skin colour and then I just add a little dot of the caramel and then I slowly add in a little bit more caramel depending on how more deeper tan that you want the skin to look. So these are really good to have. I will link everything that I use in the description below. Another option to colour your clay is to use acrylic paint. Now this is a good option if you're using your clay straight away. But if you're planning on colouring your clay and then needing to store it, it can dry out a little bit quicker if you have used acrylic paint. So if you're planning on colouring your clay and then storing it, I would definitely rather use the pigments. Another essential item are the silicone moulds. You can get a variety of different sorts as long as you've got a head, a body, hair. That is the main parts that you need to begin with, but you can get all sorts of different moulds. These ones, again, are all from Necron Australia and they are by Danny Decor. So to make my clay, I use one part traditional to two parts soft of the clay and this makes a perfect texture. And what I do is I mix it in with my hands and at the same time I am conditioning the clay. Conditioning the clay means that you're making it really nice and pliable and easy to work with. And then taking my mould, which I have given a clean with a wet wipe to remove any dust or residue, and also some coconut oil or you can use baby oil, and a clean brush, I'm going to paint this lightly into the mould of the sections I'm going to be using and this works as a release agent so when it comes to releasing the clay it comes out easily. I've got some skin coloured clay which I coloured with my pigments and I've conditioned it now in my hand and rolled it into a ball and I'm going to push it firmly into the face mould and then just give it a little push in at the sides and then as you can see it releases nice and easily. It's important to keep all of your surfaces clean and free of dust so it doesn't transfer onto your clay. Next you need some pins. You can use eye pins or some just jewellery pins and I cut these to around sort of one inch depending on the size of your doll. And then I mark a hole at the bottom centre of my clay doll head and this is where I will join on the body. And then using white PVA glue I pop a little bit on one end of the pin and again pop it into the hole that I made earlier and then let that dry and then that is there ready for when we attach our body. Next taking my eyes, I've got some different sizes of eyes, it depends if you want a really big eyed look or smaller eyes. I'm going for these, I think these are five or six millimeter ones and you pop them just above where the cheek part comes out so sort of halfway down. So I carefully line these up, make sure they're both level and then I use a rounded end tool to push them into the clay by around a millimetre or two and that will then hold them in there nicely as the clay dries. Next we're going to make the mouth. As you can see I've cut a half semicircle shape out of the lid of this paintbrush. You can get tools with this shape but this is just what I use. And then using this silicone tool, I like to add a little dimple at the side of the smile, like that. For the blush, I use some matte eyeshadow. So I don't use a metallic one, so that don't quite look right. So a matte eyeshadow in a pinky colour, and I add it to the cheeks. And then using the same brush, not so much eyeshadow on there, and just do a little bit on the forehead, just to give it a little bit of a flushed look. And then using, again, acrylic paint in a brown, or you can use black, or whichever colour you want to use to match your doll's hair colour. So mine's going to be a brunette doll, so I'm using brown. And I've got a fine paintbrush, and I'm going to paint on the eyelashes. This does take practice. You can get eyelash stickers from Necron Australia, 
which you just apply on, you wet the clay and they stick on. But I do like to paint mine. I do think it gives a really nice finish. But yeah, it just takes practice. Just don't press too hard with the paintbrush. And if you do make a mistake, it is easy to wipe off just using a wet wipe. Just carefully wipe it off and then start again. If you do wipe it off quite a bit in your practice, and I recommend doing this on dry clay because whilst your clay is still wet, if you keep wetting it, it might misshapen your doll's head. Cleaning my paintbrush now with a wet wipe, we're ready to make her dress. So I've got some pink clay now, which I coloured using my pigments. I've conditioned the clay and popped it into the mould. I've got this acrylic rolling pin, which is really good for flattening the back. I will link all the recommended tools in the description below. I've rolled two little balls of clay here, as you can see, and this is to add sleeves onto the dress. Using my white glue, I'm going to attach her dress to the other half of that pin now. And then I'm also going to apply some white glue to the sides and add those sleeves. And that just adds a little something different to her dress. And now I've rolled some arms. I rolled these myself. I just took two balls of clay, rolled them out, thinner at one end and thicker at the bottom. And I'm going to use my white glue now to attach them to the sleeves and her body. I've bent them to give them sort of a bent look because she's going to be holding something in her hands. And now to give her some legs, I'm using my mould again for this. I'm just using my thumb knuckle to push it into the mould. And I'm using this tool just to separate the legs a little bit, how I'd like them to look. Attaching them again with my white glue, because white glue does work really well with wet clay. And this is what the finished doll looked like. I'm showing you this now, because when I do the hair, I'm going to show you a different doll for that. So taking my hair mould, again this is from Necron Australia and it is a Danny Decor mould. I'm using my coconut oil to act as a release agent so I can easily release the clay from the mould. And first of all I'm going to do the back of her hair because I'm giving her like a side ponytail. So instead of using my mould for this part, I'm rolling a ball and I've got this flat piece of acrylic here. Again this is really good to have so I will link one of these in the description below. So I'm flattening this rounded piece of clay to around sort of two to three millimetres in thickness. And I want it to be just sort of roughly the size of her head, a little bit bigger. So I'm just trimming this down now. And you can add some lines on it to make sort of like a hair texture. But I'm going to add this as it is. So I'll just check for size again. So yeah, that's the right size. So again, using my white PVA glue, I'm going to attach this to the back of her head. Now you can do this once the clay doll is completely dry. It makes it a little bit easier to do the hair when it is dry. But I do do mine wet on wet. I just do it very carefully. So I'm just wrapping the hair slightly around the edges. So this gives the effect that that is the back of her hair. And because I'm doing a ponytail, that is why I've just covered the part, main part of her head and not made it longer. And now I'm using my tool and I'm just marking some lines in there to give it sort of a hair texture around her face. Taking my mould again, this time using this long section in the mould and we're going to make her ponytail. So taking another piece of black clay which has already been conditioned and I'm rolling it in my hand to make it a long shape to fit in the mould. And pushing it into the mould and then I'm going to take this tool and make some lines in it to give it a hair texture. It's already got a hair texture in the mould, but this side obviously will just be flat. So I'm giving it a hair texture on both sides. And then I'm going to use my fingers now to curl this long piece of hair. So I'm just going to swirl it around to make like a spiral curl. So that is why I made the hair texture on both sides, because you can see both sides, so it looks like that. I'm going to do another one now exactly the same. So we've got two pieces now to make her a nice full side ponytail. So I'm going to join these two together, both curled nicely. And once I'm happy with them, I'm going to use my white glue and just make a little dent and attach it onto her head. 
Next I'm going to make two fringe pieces. So using the shorter piece on the mould, I'm not going to bother making the hairlines on both sides because you will only see one side. Again using white glue and I've got these two pieces now to attach to the front of her head to give her this sort of swooping fringe. And then I'm just using my tool to push it into her head and give it some more texture and carefully add glue just underneath to help it stick down. I'm also going to make her hair bow to finish this off. So I've got another mould with a bow shape on there. Again using some coconut oil and this time some red coloured clay. And I've got this cute little bow which I can now attach to her hair with again white glue. Just place that on the top of her ponytail and that will hide the join and just finish that off really well. And that is how you make a clay doll. And now for the extras, I'm going to add some glitter now to this one. So to add glitter, again using white glue, I'm just placing the white glue on the areas where I want my glitter to be. So around the edges of her skirt, the heart and the bow. And then I'm going to use a brush just to pick up the glitter and place it carefully on the areas that I want it to be. You can sprinkle the glitter all over, but because my clay is still wet, I don't want it to stick to the whole doll. So I'm just carefully applying it with this brush. And here she is on a hair bow. Isn't she gorgeous? And the other thing you can do for clay dolls is to decoupage their dresses to match your ribbon. I actually print my own decoupage. I'll pop a link in the top corner now so you can check that tutorial out. And this is how I decoupage my clays. So starting with your hardened clay and some decoupage sheets. I got these ones from Necron Australia, but like I said, I have printed my own so you can check out my tutorial if you want to have a go at that. So beginning with cutting out a piece of the decoupage paper just big enough to cover your item that you're decoupaging. Just make sure you leave a little bit of overhang, enough to wrap around the sides of the item. Again, using our white PVA glue, we're going to coat the dress, in this case, that we're decoupaging. So covering all of the areas, making sure I get in all of the grooves, around the sleeves, down the sides, and just making sure it's got a good coating of the PVA glue. You don't want it too thick, but make sure that it is coated. And then taking your piece of paper, holding it over the clay dress, and I'm just going to push it all down. And then I'm going to snip it around the sides and any excess pieces off. And by cutting these little snippets in the side, it makes it easier to get around those curved edges. So just snip inwards like that. Then you can get it right round in all the curved edges. Pushing it round that pin at the top, making sure it's all nice and neat and covered. Trimming off again any excess pieces. So I'm not going to cover right the underside of her dress, just the top side. So I'm cutting all of these pieces off around the bottom in line with her dress. And then the pieces that you can't cut you use a nail file, so just a fine nail file, and then you can just gently file away all of those edgings. And here she is finished. I do leave the dress to dry and I give it one last coating of PVA glue over the top and this just helps to seal it all in. Another idea that I really like is using these alphabet beads and you can personalize these. You can add a name or like this one, I've just put the word princess. It's such a cute idea. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you press the bell button, that will turn on notifications. If you've got any other questions, please do pop them into the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.